almost there. Getting pretty chunky. Hey, it's Care. Welcome to my take at the lake. Another episode of our Seasons Glue Book. This is our spring digital flip through. If you're new here and have no idea what I'm talking about, welcome. What I'm talking about is an open collaboration between me and Amy at Doki Doki Forest. We thought it'd be fun to harvest the same magazines together at the same time, decide together which images to use, and then go about gluing them our separate ways to see if we did anything alike or how differently we did things. It's been great fun. It's an open collaboration, which means anyone can play along. And so far, Sylvia D has gotten our digital version of this project and Coralie at Magic by the Ocean and Christina at Christina's Shack have all been playing along and it's so awesome. And by playing along, what that means is because we're mostly using older magazines, it's not likely people will be able to have those magazines intact so that they can harvest along with us. And so what we've done for winter and spring is we've each curated seasonal images into four pages that we give away on our Patreon pages. And you can go download them anytime, even though winter is over and we've done it. They're still beautiful images. Winter comes back every single year. So feel free to go get those images, download them and use them in your glue book or junk journals or altered books for your personal use of course, of course, because we have just simply curated things we liked from the internet. It's just for fun, not for profit. <laughs> the today's flip through is about the digital version. We've already done the spring, the spring version of the magazine images that we collected. We did that a while ago and did a flip through. And today I'm going to do a flip through of the spring digitals. And I have to say, holy smack. Look, more peonies. If you've not seen it, I'm obsessed by peonies. Go check out my recent video. I'll link it below. Hooked on peonies. It's funny because Sylvia D and Christina at Christina Shack have already done their their videos. They've already used the spring images and they've already done their videos and posted them. So Amy and I are a bit behind on this. And usually I don't watch them. In fact, when Christina's came out, I said to myself, oh, I don't want to watch it until I do my digitals because I don't want to be influenced. I want to just do my, my glue book however I would do my glue book and then watch Christina's. Literally later that day, hours and hours later, I went, oh, Christina's got a new video. Let's watch it. In the name of avoiding something, I'm sure. Sat right there and watched the whole thing. <laughs> like, didn't even think about my earlier decision not to watch it until after I had done. Well, then, then I saw Sylvia's come out, so I'd already watched Christine's, might as well watch Sylvia's too. And so I did. <laughs> and I, I hope that that didn't influence mine. I don't know. It's hard to say. But then Saturday, over this recent weekend, I got all the stuff out because Amy wanted to do it last week and I was, I was my week was booked solid. And so I said, you know, can we please push it out a week? And she was very gracious and fine with that. And so we pushed it to, to do it this week. And I said, well, maybe this weekend I can get time to do my spring gluing. And I got everything out Saturday morning. I have a basket that I had already trimmed and sorted into the things that I wanted. The page layouts, I had already sorted them into piles of where I thought I wanted everything to go. I set everything out on Saturday in my basket full of images in the order in which I wanted to glue them. I laid out my first page and then I found something shiny and just left it there on the table the whole rest of the day. Just didn't even go back to it. Not even once. And I thought, well, that's weird because I love glue booking. Why would I avoid it like the plague? Well, I just wasn't feeling it. You know, I just wasn't feeling Easter seems like years ago already and I just didn't so you'll see in the picture here I have all my Easter stuff I was gonna put all my Easter stuff first because that's what happened first I laid it all out and I thought ah I don't feel like doing Easter so I put all that away 
and I, I wanted to do all purple. So that's where I started. I, I started over and that helped, but it literally took me the entire day to finish this. I found 8 million things to do and said, I think I'll take a shower. I think I need breakfast. I think I'll clean up this. I think I'll go outside. I think Bitsy needs some love. <laughs> I found anything I could do in order not to do this. So I have to think my heart really wasn't in this until the last page or so. And then I finally got wound up. And here's the weird thing. After dragging my feet all day and making this progress project last all day, when I was done, I glue booked some more in another glue book because I, now I was on a roll. It took 12 hours to get there, but man, I was on a roll. So I'll just show you, I did not record that because for a number of reasons, I did not record my process. I did take lots of pictures here and I'll just let you see that the process a little bit, you know, I show you my page layout as I think it's going to be and then my scraps on one side to my right are some scraps and borders and pieces and then I show you my basket on the left still full still full still full even though I've been gluing and gluing and gluing I kept, I was keeping Amy posted all day there's a lot of there's a lot of digital images this time she said yeah there are anyway turns out she did the same thing she got all her stuff out on Saturday she she was ready to go and then she didn't touch it all day Saturday and ended up doing it Sunday morning. And when I texted her and I said, I didn't touch this stuff all day yesterday. I'm going to start right now. She said, I just finished mine. So once again, we're on that same wave wavelength. It's, it's kind of bizarre because we haven't been talking and texting too much. Everybody's been so busy. So there's no way we could know what each other's doing because we're not discussing it at all. And yet we're doing similar slash the same things. So... Those are my pictures of the process and I will get us to, so we left off on spring cleaning with the magazine spring glue book. Again, hashtag using the same images. So as you saw in the picture, I had, was going to do all my Easter stuff first because that's what came first. Easter came very early and I just didn't feel like doing Easter. And so I put away all the Easter stuff and I pulled out all the the, the purple pile well there wasn't that much to the purple pile so I thought well what else are my favorites of course the water and the rain and so I figured sunrise sunset balance each other out pretty well I wanted purple to be the focal point of this layout I love her I just love her she's I love her purple hair and her crazy outfit and her feather wings and she's wonderful and just this page came together pretty easy because I had that theme in my mind because I knew kind of what I wanted. Easter, I had it all laid out. I just didn't feel like gluing Easter. So this is the only thing that kind of doesn't sit right with me, but it had the purple tulips in it. She has a tiny bit of pink over here in her dress, and there's a tiny bit of pink in this and a little bit of pink in her hat so these corners kind of balance this pink with bits of pink over here and that's I'm always trying to not consciously but the rules of good design are always in the back of my brain always rattling at me what balances out what evens out what what works together rain here rain here water water um, little tiny bits of purple in this gorgeous little hedgehog and there wasn't much there's a lot of blue here and not much here and so i had that pile of scraps off to my right of all the borders and things that we had to you we had available to us to use and so i pulled some of that bl blue and teal from this corner over to this side just again to give it some balance now this looks very plain it looks like there's nothing here but that's part of the rain you can still see the lines through it but here's blank paper this is part of the rain so i may go in here with a pen later and just indicate the rain so it doesn't look like a giant blank spot because it's not or i might find a quote about the rain i'm sure one of my quote kits 
my words to live by. I'm sure the summer one has things about rain. I'll cut something out and put it here, but that doesn't, she doesn't have those, and so I can't put it in here until this project is finished, and then it's mine to do with what I want. That's my plan. We'll see if I remember. Then I did the Easter page, and I don't think it's laid out the same way that I had it originally. I wanted to use these in the corners. I wanted both the corners to have the Easter eggs, but the way that I cut it, it didn't work. This corner worked, but this corner would have had to go down here, and I already had this little guy glued in. And I chewed his butt off with a pair of scissors. I've recently gone no sugar, no, no candy. I'm not a big candy eater anyway, but I did discover whilst cutting out sugar, I have quite a bit of a sweet tooth. And so this little chocolate bunny just looked so yummy. I decided to take a virtual bite out of his butt just to satisfy my, my inner sweet tooth. And I filled this in with these sprinkles. You know, sprinkles, they get everywhere. You know, they just, when you're using them, they just go all over the place. When you're eating them, they just fall all over the place. And I thought it was fun to fill in with the sprinkles. I used all my Easter bunnies here in the one place to say Easter. I shouldn't say all. I have one more. I have a few more throughout, but... Pretty much this is the Easter Bunny page. I love this one with the reflections and the little white chocolate ears on some of them. They're so cute. He just makes me laugh. I just think he is so funny. He looks like that kid. There's a meme of a little girl with a really funny look on her little face. And this little bunny reminds me of that little bunny. I'm going to put a side by side here. It just makes me laugh. <laughs> and that face that looks so much like my Ridley. This one looks like my Ridley too, a little bit. This one looks like my Riley. These are not my Bostons, by the way. I don't dress my Bostons up. I don't pose them. I, I just take their picture when they do stuff on their own. I've never posed them and I, I have had Halloween costumes on them, I think once, and I do make them wear coats when it's really cold because they don't have undercoats like most dogs. They have one coat of fur. It's like going outside naked. I love some of these pictures. They're just so cute. Again, these are the digital images that you can go to our Patreon pages and get for free. I'm going to leave mine up until we're done with this season's glue book. We have one more season to harvest. We're probably going to do it the same way harvest we each have the same two magazines for summer. We'll harvest those and we'll do another digital kit for people who want to play along. I'm going to put this out there, Amy. Maybe not four pages this time. <laughs> Maybe just three. Man, there was a lot of stuff here to work with. We'll work that out. Of course, I did five. I did the Boston's page as a bonus. You didn't have to use those, but I had so many cute Boston Easter pictures, I just had to include them. Completely pure self-indulgence was that. Some of these I put on last. This I had was one of the last pieces I had left, and I put that on almost at the very end. So these pages didn't all come together right at once. I glued most of the stuff down, some of the trim around the page border, but the filling in with the sprinkles came at the end. This spring bunting came at the end. Most things you'll notice I have straight. They're, they're straight, fairly straight. Landscape or, or portrait, they're up and down. But these two are tilted in just a little bit. Number one, to break up the monotony. Of course, these are these are funky too, and he's kind of funky. But having that little bit of kitty wampus just makes it a little bit more whimsical, less formal, less structured. I like structured, oddly enough. There's a lot going on here. And so having the structure helps keep things from being overwhelming. If I had everything tilted in kitty wampus, you wouldn't know where to look. But this kind of reads through. We start here. We go across to the bunnies. We see here. It leads us to the lamb. He's looking back this way and kicking up his heels. That brings us back this way. He's looking this way. We come to the bunny who's in the center looking right at us. 
This one's kind of off, but looking sort of to the right. So I have him keeping us in the image, and right behind him is another bunny looking right at us. We drop down, she's looking that way. He's kind of, you know, jacked up. He's looking right at us, and he's looking that way. And it just reads like a book, even though you might not register that. That's how our brains will roll through this. If everything is all just kittywampus and no rhyme or reason, your eye brain doesn't know where to start, where to end, where to rest. So by having this path, and I did not, I did not think, oh, well, I need, I need to start here and, and guide them this way. This is what happens when you make rules of good design part of your toolkit. These things just come automatically to me now. I want to point this out. This is a, a professional photographer did this for Pixabay or something. Look at how the bunnies look. Of course, he's facing the wrong way, but most of them on this side are facing that way. The one in the center is facing us, and these, for the most part, are facing this way. It, it keeps us looking. If they were all looking this way, we'd out, we'd look, we'd read it, and we'd go right off the page. But beautifully, he is taking us right to our little basket of beauties here. And they, little duckling, is take, or maybe she's a goose, is taking us right to little lamekins here. And lamekins is kicking up his heels and saying, "Go back this way." It's a it's a really good example of keeping the viewer on the page. You, this is your story, and you want to keep your viewer clear on what's happening and staying with the story. The last thing you want to do is go off the page and go, okay, what's next, before they get to the end. I wanted to put all the bunnies on one page, the Easter eggs, the bunny, the bunnies, and the bunny on one page. I had these on the Easter page too, but there was just too much. So I brought them over here. So down here, this bottom half is sort of the continuing of Easter. But of course, these are all Easter colors and spring colors. And so they work well together. I've got my bunny facing in again. That's keeping us in the page. The rainbow comes up and over. So that brings us to here. He's facing in. So it's keeping us in instead of telling us to go off the page. I love that this is daylight rainbow. Moon's out, stars are out, so sun, daylight, nighttime. Another good subtle balance, daytime, nighttime. Even though they're the same colors, almost the same size. I cut part of this off because I, there's no reason to bury it down here. And I wanted it for other places. I think this down here in this corner might be part of it. So again, rainbow there and rainbow here. I didn't do that on purpose. I put the rainbow here for my three Bostons who have passed along and are now waiting at the rainbow bridge to meet up again. That's why that rainbow is there, but it works by balancing with this rainbow. Bunnies and bunnies. This is the only interactive piece that I have in this one. These bunnies are a tuck spot for this bunny. I wanted to give this bunny her own whole page. She is so adorable, so cute. Everywhere I put her, she got lost in the shuffle or she looked out of place. Here, even though I can't see her all the time, I left this tail on to remind me. I can pull her out and look at her up close. She, she gets special attention every time I look at this book I pull her out. I put this tail on for two reasons. Three reasons. One, to remind me she's there. Two, to balance some of these blues up in here and the yellows up in here that I have down here. Over here I've got the yellow and the pink. Here I've got the yellow and the pink. Here I've got the bluish purple. Here I've got some bluish teals. It just kind of balanced a little bit. And of course it gives me a nice way to pull her out easily. Why did the Easter Bunny cross the road? Because the chicken had its eggs.
and he's laughing. That's his smart aleck joke. This page is all about rain. It may not look like that at first. These were going to be two separate pages when I first organized them. And this again goes back to the hashtag harvested mag swap and that every time you look at your magazines you see something different whether it's your magazines or something somebody else harvested i trimmed these cut these out and trimmed them up and fussy cut some of them all at once and when i did that weeks ago i organized them into the way that i wanted the pages to be at that minute well when i went to do it weeks later I didn't want to do it that way anymore. It didn't make sense to me anymore. It wasn't working anymore. It's perfectly okay to let that original idea just let it go. <laughs> if if you have to force that square peg into a round hole and it's drudgery and you hate it, don't do it. It's art. It's creative. It's fun. Change up, change up your mind. Do something different. So this ended up being... A rain page. Shout out to Sandy K. I gotta love a rainstorm, right? And Sandy will certainly know this because she is also in Michigan, and I think Jean Bainey will probably know this. But here's a little quiz for you. I live up north compared to Jean and Sandy, but compared to people who live north of me, I live what they call under the bridge. Do you know what they call people who live under the bridge? They call us trolls. For those of you who are of an international audience and you're not familiar with our states, especially Michigan, Michigan is two parts, really. It's the, the mitt that everybody knows, the hand. Our state is shaped like a mitten. And up here, we have a bridge. It's about five miles long, Mackinac Bridge, world famous. They go over that bridge, and up here is what's called the Upper Peninsula. UP. They live in the UP, Upper Peninsula. UP. Well, they talk funny because they're really close to Canada, eh? And so they, who live over the bridge, over the bridge, up north, over the bridge, they're called Upers. The Upers. There's even a band called the Upers. They're also called by the by, fudgies, because of Mackinac Island's famous fudge, which I find to be disgusting, even before I went no sugar. Blech. I know what fudge is supposed to taste like, and that ain't it. Anyway, this story is about, and I, I certainly didn't mean to have a story, I, I, that's not my thing, but this is how this page ended up. She's kind of like my rain girl, my rain witch rain fairy and she's looking in mirror mirror that's what these two remind me of and her being on the bridge and the rain coming down and the rain to me it looks a little bit little tiny bit like there's rain hitting down here so all of this stuff is under the bridge stuff the lily pads that are under her bridge they're getting rained on that's under the bridge he's under the bridge they're under the bridge she's under the bridge so it's all about rain and the aftermath of rain, playing in the puddles. Sometimes a crick like this will be empty until it rains, and then you can go play in it. So this is all about the rain. The little baby ducks are happy in their little heart-shaped pond, and she made it all happen. This. You know what I just noticed? She has a butterfly in her hair. And I did not find a way to cover that up. I have. I still have one piece of scrap left. I'll show you a picture. One scrap. And it's. I think it's from her background. One scrap. I'm going to cover up that butterfly. Just on principle. Although I have I have the meat butterflies from spring. We have these. I didn't. Well, I did cover these up. I told them to get away. So I might just for fun go in there and cover that up. Just, just for fun and spite. <laughs> But I didn't notice her till just this moment. This too is, uh, not only does it have an Amy-inspired story, but it's also, I covered every single speck. There's not a line that you can see. There's no white paper on here. Every piece was covered in scraps in order to 
uh, break up the seams or cover up any white spots that were left. So look at me go. Mm -hmm. And this one also has a wee bit of a story as well. This is my spring cleaning fairy. Mm -hmm. She's going to come and, and do all of my spring cleaning for me, including cleaning up the yard so that I can read, ride my bike, pick some posies, just skate. Come in and have some tea and a, and a little pedophore because my spring cleaning fairy has done her magic and I don't have to deal with any of that K-Rap at all. She's done it for me so I can just enjoy the season. That brings us to summer. I'm happy to report that I think I'm going to have probably just enough, just enough paper to do summer. So we can't do four pages of digitals again because I won't have room. Of course, that all depends on how good our two summer magazines are. Our spring magazines did not have very, one of them did not have very many images in it at all. So hopefully the two summer magazines will have lots of images. If not, then we'll have more digitals it'll be fine. But I, I'm happy to say, I think it's going to work out just ducky. As I'm looking at this, I want to bring this to your attention. This is what happens, and I've showed this before. This is what happens when you work a book from front to back. This is a new glue book, or a new composition book. A new glue book that I've started, but I've only glued a handful of images, so you can't even tell there's anything in there. See how this is level? It's straight right here, as it should be, compared to this angle. This is where I've filled all the glue book, and then these are way back here. You see how far back they are? That's crazy, isn't it? So it'll be interesting to see if these jut out eventually or if the whole thing ends up, because these at one point were angled as well. These pages that I've just glued, these were back this way too, but it's evened out as I've gone, but it's really jacking up the spine. Look, see, these are, these are, the front pages and they're at the spine from the middle out look where that spine is look how far back they've not gone and i noticed that in gluing like here this this is pretty flat this is how it should be you can see the stitching but back here it's folded over it's folded over quite a bit. So I, when you lay it flat, you can't see those stitches. Where in a new one, you would be able to see those stitches. Right here. Because, because it's not those pages. What's happened is those pages have gotten full and pushed these over. Might be able to show you better here, or if I take another page and I just open it up, there's, well, I guess it doesn't matter. There's a lot of overhang here where you can't see, even if you pull it way back, you can't see those stitches. So it'll be very interesting to see how this works. Is it gonna, are these gonna stay back? I would imagine so because of this. So interesting. But that is why people tell you all the time, if you're doing a glue book like this, if possible, work a little in the front, a little in the back. I'll show you this one that I have started. I took a post-it out that I left myself. It says start here. And it's way in the back because I didn't I need to do some way back here. I I did I think I started right in the middle if I remember correctly. I started right in the middle and then I did some in the front 
and then I did some in the middle of the front and then I did some in the back and so next time I go I'm gonna have to do way way back and then bounce around so that ideally the whole thing fills up and we don't get that crazy difference in spine action that there'll be some of this over here too and these will be back further that's the ideal we'll see so it's been a really good experiment for that the other thing that I did with this and I'm going to show you now because I might not remember in the summer but these two things are not harvested images that we did together because I ran out literally I had one scrap piece left that I showed you on that picture one piece that was all I had left so I didn't have anything to put on the back cover to represent spring so I just grabbed a spring birds and blooms and grabbed a strip that said springtime to me and nothing says spring like these cherry blossoms or whatever they are apple block apple blossoms cherry blossoms I don't know what they are and it had some writing on it so I just cut out something similar and covered up that writing and I thought well while I'm doing this I'm gonna do summer too and I grabbed a strip and I swear I did not plan this I tore the strip because I wanted this chair the goodie basket sitting next to her it's got her little blanket and a book and all kinds of stuff there's a pillow and a blanket so she wants to sunbathe she can I just tore that and glued it here and it perfectly fit and wrapped around and so summer takes us right back into fall and I just thought that I love when shit works out like that when I don't plan it I could if I'd have worked two days to plan this out it would not have gone this seamlessly but if I just let the universe do its magic well looky there I also put some invisible scotch tape over where the two pieces meet. You can see there's just a tiny bit of the black. This black tape is still showing because I didn't tear it perfectly. I didn't expect it. I expected to tear it off over here somewhere. Anyway, beautiful. Put on some of that tape. So she's coming along nicely. One more season. The link to the spring and winter digitals. You just have to go to my Patreon page. There's always a link in the description to my Patreon page. You have to go there. And the spring ones are close to the top. The winter ones are down a little bit further. You just have to scroll. You'll see them. Open up the post. And at the end of the post, there's a PDF. Click on the PDF, and you can either print directly from the PDF or download it and then print it. Easy peasy. Couldn't be easier. I hope you enjoyed this. I sure am having fun with this open collaboration with Amy at Doki Doki Forest. Please go over and watch her videos. I did have a comment on one of my videos that said they had a hard time finding, finding both. We both link them in our description. The, it shouldn't take any effort at all we want to make it as easy for you as possible to watch both of them if there happens to be no link or the link doesn't work you can always go in the search bar and search the hashtag using the same images all one word use the hashtag symbol using the same images and that will bring up any and then hit search that will bring up any videos that that are using this hashtag so you can see not only mine and Amy's but also Sylvia D's Magic by the Oceans and Christina's Shacks videos because so far I think they're the only ones playing along they're the only ones that I've seen if you are playing along throw it in the even if you don't have a YouTube channel if you've gone and gotten the digital images I'd love to know about it because really on Patreon there's all kinds of freebies there and as far as I can tell three people have gotten them out of the, I don't know how many followers there on Patreon, maybe 30 now. 
Yay, we're growing all the time. Thank you very much for following me there, too. We're going to be more involved there this year. There's lots and lots and lots and lots of freebies there. But it's like throwing stuff into a vacuum. I don't I don't know where it's going. I, I Thank you to the people who do say, thanks, love it, or, you know, just leave a like. All you gotta do is hit the little like button. None of that's going to cost you any money. So don't be afraid of liking and commenting on Patreon if you're a free follower, because it's just like YouTube, unless you've paid a subscription and they they make it very clear you hit something that is going to cost money that it'll pop up it's going to cost whatever do you want to pay that how do you want to pay that they give you three or four or five chances to back out <laughs> like a, no 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 i just meant to hit a like so don't be afraid of patreon at all anyway go get the digitals let me know if you have gotten the digitals and are playing along i would love to know about it so would amy keep us in touch and Keep watching because there's lots more coming. Until we meet again, go love up your Beasleys. And by that, I mean keep them safe. Don't let them hang their head out the window when you're going down the road at 25, 40, 70 miles an hour. You wouldn't let your grandbaby do it. Don't let your dog do it. Mateg at the lake. Out for now.